When I first began using Jira Service Management, I had zero training, and this made it really hard to do my job. So I've put together this quick start guide for you, someone who's brand new to using Jira Service Management. Here, we're going to talk a little bit about what Jira Service Management, or JSM, is for, and how you can use it to be successful in your job quickly. I did organize this video around some chapters, starting with what is Jira Service Management, but then doing things like basic navigation within Jira, basic navigation for work items, and then using a work item. So please feel free to use the chapters to skip around to those major sections if you need to. And also, if you like this at any time, please push the like button down below. I would appreciate it, but it will also help other people find this content and help them out as well. So now that that's out of the way, let's jump in and start learning about JSM. Jira Service Management is a platform made by a company called Atlassian and is intended to help teams like yours manage all of the incoming requests for help that you're going to get. Within Jira Service Management, work will be organized into projects. Each project will relate to a particular thing. For example, the IT help desk may have one project, your engineering team may have a separate project, and human resources may have a different one entirely. These projects are basically just used to organize work so everyone knows who should be working on what, but they also allow teams to have different settings and configurations to support their work. Projects are maintained by someone called a project administrator. This might be your manager or someone in IT. So if you find something wrong with a project or have questions about it, that is a great person to go and find. Within projects are things called work items, and this is just a unit of work. It could represent something like a password reset, or an incident happened, or a bug, or almost anything else. The types of work items you work on will differ based on your role, but they all represent something that you can go work on and give you a way to track everything that's happening to them. Now, work items will follow a workflow. This workflow is just a representation of the process your team uses to resolve work and is comprised of a number of statuses, for example, open, pending, and done, and transitions, ways to move the work item between those statuses. These work items will also be organized into things called queues, which are essentially collections of work items designed by your project admin to help you as the agent easily figure out what to work on next. Queues can be organized by almost anything, for example, high priority tickets or open items, to make it easier for you to figure out what you should be doing next. Work items are typically entered into a project by a customer. This is someone who needs help from your team. The request they enter might be related to a password reset or a new piece of hardware or a question but customers will enter these requests through the customer portal. This is how most of the work items will end up in Jira and end up in the queues that you will be working out of to resolve those work items. You may also see service level agreements or SLAs pop up on your work items. These are essentially timers that let you know how much time you have to resolve a certain work item or to complete a certain thing, for example, responding to the customer. These can seem a bit intimidating, but they are there to help ensure we all know what's going on and to set clear expectations. They're also a great way for you as an agent to easily figure out what to work on next. Whichever one has the least time left should probably be the one you complete next. So now that we understand a little bit about the structure and setup of Jira Service Management, we're going to jump into a copy of Jira Service Management called Cloud Premium, and I'm going to show you how to navigate and how to find work items and how to manipulate them. So let's jump on in and see what it's like. Here we are taking a look at Jira Service Management Cloud Premium, but everything I show you should work in every version of Jira. Up in the top left, I have some options to do things like collapse the sidebar to make more room. I can switch sites or different apps, so if my team is using other Atlassian products, I can find them here. And I can click on the Jira logo to come back to this page, which is called the For You page. It contains things like recent projects you've looked at, as well as other work items you've worked on, things you might have viewed, and things that are assigned to you. So this is a great place to go if you're ever lost or stuck or just kind of forget what you were doing. Up at the top middle of this screen is a search bar. And this is really important because it makes it very easy to search for work. You can come in here and type in keywords and it will list all the work items that contain them or type in anything else you might find on the work item to quickly find them. You can also easily access this menu by clicking the forward slash on your keyboard. Next to that, you have a create button this allows you to instantly create a work item. This is not how a customer would create it though. They will be using the portal to put them in. So customers wouldn't necessarily have access to this. Up in the top right, we have a button to see notifications we might have. We have a help button, settings, and then your profile. Over on the left, we have our navigation bar. 
Now everything listed in here is customizable by clicking on more and then going to customize sidebar. So I can easily add items just by checking them, removing them by unchecking them, and then rearranging them just by clicking and dragging them in this list. Take a moment to customize this to meet your needs, just so it's clear of clutter. When you're ready, just save changes, and anything you've hidden will show up under more. You can view what's in each of these just by clicking on them. For example, I can click on projects to see all of the projects. And here I'll see my starred projects, as well as just a list of other projects I've recently been to. You can star a project, which is similar to bookmarking it by clicking on the three dots and clicking add a starred, and this will move it to the top. I encourage folks do this for projects they work in frequently. It makes them much, much easier to find. Next, we're gonna take a look and see how we can manage our notifications. Click on the settings gear, and you may have less options than I do. I am a system administrator, so you may only see personal JIRA settings. And then open up notification settings. This will let you turn on or off specific notifications. So take a moment to review these and then disable or enable ones as you need to. I find that I like to tweak this because I will get a lot of different notifications. So knowing where this is under the gear and notification settings is very useful. You also have a manage general settings, which has some other options. For example, changing the theme or changing the homepage that you land on when you first open Jira. Take a moment to review these just so you know what's in them. Hey there, just quickly wanted to jump in and ask you to like this video if you like it. This will help other people find it and help other people avoid the frustration that hopefully you'll avoid by watching this. So take a minute, hit that like button down below and let's get back to it. So now that we know a bit about basic navigation, we're gonna jump in and look at some work items. To do this, I'm just gonna pick on a project, in this case, my example project, and I will instantly be brought to queues. These can also be found on the left. And I can see that there are a number of queues. I've starred one, similar to how I can star a project to bring it to the top, something I highly recommend. But I can also then click to navigate through different queues that exist. This particular queue shows me work items that are assigned to me, and I have some options. I can do things like search through the work items listed here, and then filter them by different fields up at the top. These options help me more easily find work, but one thing I always pay attention to is an SLA field if I have one. In this case, there's an SLA called time to resolution. And this is showing me the ticket on the top has the least time. In this case, it's very overdue. So I'm just gonna click on its summary to open it up. And here we have a work item. Again, this is what agents see people working on tickets. Way up at the top, I have the ticket number, ETMP-2. Every work item in the same project will start with the same key, ETMP, and then just a sequential number. I can instantly copy a link, and if I mouse over this little icon, I can see the work item type. I can use these arrows to move between work items to quickly browse them. Under that, I have the summary of the work item. In this case, it's just called software. And then I have some options to do things like create subtasks, link other information to this work item, add in a form, and create documentation directly from here. Underneath that, I have more information, including a link to the request. If I click this, I will see exactly what the customer sees for this work item. So this is the customer's view of the same exact information. We can see they see the summary and the description, but not much else. This helps the agent get the information they need while letting the customer focus on what they need to do. One thing to be careful of is do not share the link to the work item to the customer. They might not be able to open it. Instead, you'll have to give them this link, view request in portal. Next, I have some other options like showing similar requests. This is based on Atlassian's artificial intelligence, so you may or may not have access to this as well as playbooks that your team might have set up to help you better resolve work items. Underneath that, I have the activity section. This shows everything that has happened to this particular work item, including things like comments, which is the default, but I can also see its history. When was it created and what changes have happened, what work has been logged to it, and if there's been any approvals on it. I tend to keep comments up because I am constantly communicating either internally with my team, which only other agents and team members see, and these are the yellow comments, or externally with the customer, which the customer will see on the portal. To add a new comment, I just need to click add internal note or reply to customer, and then I can type in my message. Once I click save, the customer will get a notification if it's a reply to customer, and I can also do things like at mention individuals, so I can get their attention and notify them that way. On the right side of the screen, I have additional information. I can watch a work item, and this will make sure I get updates about it. I can vote for it. 
I can click share to easily share it internally, and I have some other actions. Underneath that, I have a list of any SLAs that are applied to this work item, and I can see there are two, time to first response and time to resolution. So as an agent, I'm constantly reviewing these to make sure I can resolve the work item in time. Under that, I have information about the customer, and then the details section, which shows me information about this work item, including things like who it is assigned to, which I can change just by clicking in the box and typing in a name, the reporter, the request type, its priority, and other information. Exactly what you see will differ based on your project setup. So if you work on tickets and notice differences, chat with your project admin about why that might be the case. One important thing you can do though is pin these fields. So clicking this little pin icon will move them closer to the top. I do this with important fields like reporter or other things that I find myself looking for because sometimes this list of fields can get very, very long. And we can see under more fields, there's even more information we might need to use. So that is how to navigate a work item. Up at the top, there is one button that we do need to pay attention to. And if I click on this, this will show me all the different ways I can transition this work item or move it through its workflow. At the bottom, I have a button that says View Workflow. And this will show me all the possible statuses and how this work item can move. This is important to understand because some cases, work items can't go directly from being created to being closed, for example. Or maybe I can't move them backwards in the workflow. So this diagram helps me understand how this work item can move and helps me answer questions and prevent some frustrations if I get stuck. To move this through its workflow, all I have to do is select the appropriate option here. So I'm working on this work item, I might move it to in progress. And here I may have a screen pop up asking me for more information. I can provide an update. If there are mandatory fields, I'll have a little red asterisk. And when I'm ready, I just click update. And now I can see the work item is moved and I'll see a different list of transitions because this status can only go to certain other statuses. So that is how I'll move work through its workflow. Eventually, I'll get to a point where I can resolve it. I'll provide a resolution, which is what I did to close the ticket. Maybe it was a hardware failure. And then I'll click Update. This will mark it as resolved, and I can see the resolution was hardware failure. This will likely remove this work item from my queue. So from here, I might either just click on the down arrow to move to the next work item, or I can return to my queue to see all the other work items I need to work on. So those are the basics of Jira service management. There are some best practices though I do wanna share with you. The first is to be constantly reviewing your queues. Make sure you take a look at them so you understand what work you have coming up so you can be ready for it. Next is to clearly communicate what's going on. When you work on a work item, either respond to the customer to let them know where it's at or what you're doing, or leave an internal note for the rest of your team so they know what's happening. Just don't forget that internal notes don't go to customers. So you can put information there just for your team, but the customer won't see it. And the last is raise your hand and ask questions and ask for help if you need it. There is a lot that you can do in Jira and it's very easy to get frustrated and confused, especially when you're new to a team. So make sure you're keeping track of your questions and ask your team for help. So that is Jira Service Management. It's just a big ticketing system that helps make sure you know what to do in your day to day. There is a lot more to learn about it though. So check out the links down below in the description. I have a number of online learning courses. I have free resources. I have a discord community. You can comment directly on this video if you need help, but please reach out for help. Again, in my experience, I had no training and that made it very hard. So. I made this video to hopefully help folks like yourself avoid that frustration. I do want to thank you for learning with me. Please take a minute to like this video if you liked it and subscribe. And when you're ready, I'll see you in the next video soon. Me again, thank you so much for watching that video. Check out more here and pop down into the description. I've got a blog with weekly content. I also have a lot of online learning on Atlassian stuff and project management. And if you need personalized training for you and your team, reach out and let me know. I'll be happy to get something set up for you. Thanks again for watching, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again soon.